not a problem. What's one of the most valuable lessons you've learned from a mentor? So I think um, it goes back to what I was talking about of uh, looking at the bigger picture, but not only in terms of the vision, but I think a lot of times we get kind of bogged down by the details or get hung up on something, right? That you uh, can't seem to figure out or um, you're dealing with a, a frustrating situation um, and you can't seem to get out of it. I, I, think, I think a lot of the mentors that I've had the chance to, to, to learn from have all stressed the point of taking a step back in those situations and not get hung up on one problem or one detail because that can really drain you from a from an energy standpoint but also you're not really looking at the bigger picture because in the grand scheme of things that one problem that you're facing that one roadblock that you're facing now in the grand scheme of things is probably just a blip on the radar it doesn't it doesn't really matter uh so you have you kind of have to take a step back and look at the look at the bigger picture to um you know you still have to solve the problem and you and then you just get a clear mind and, and tackle it but don't get hung up and don't judge yourself too much by that because um you know that's not going to be good for your for your mental health uh but also not good for your organization or your team in in the in the long run they need someone that's going to be focused and dedicated to a long-term vision and so the small roadblock along the way is it's just that it's just a, it's just a roadblock so we just gotta get over it but not get hung up by it besides your occupation what are some of the other hats you wear well i'm i'm a dad of a of a two and a half year old boy so um especially during the pandemic now it's been uh difficult working from home and uh, balancing that with kind of uh, family. And so, you know, I'm, I'm surprised that even during this, uh, during this uh, interview, he's not uh, popping into <laughs> my office <laughs> and, and trying, to, trying, to, trying to get me to go play with him or something. So uh, mm. that has been um, definitely challenging, but um, it's, been a, it's been a fun journey, uh, for a, a, a first time dad. What's your approach to work-life balance? So my approach is really kind of when you're in kind of your work mode and, and, and focus mode, you just want to go 110 miles per hour and just try to focus on that as much as possible. Get, get your checklist done, get your tasks done for the day, and then separate that once it's time for a family and, and home. Um, you know, there, there are times where some of those things are going to intertwine and, and, and I try to consciously try to separate that and uh, sometimes it's, 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 not, it's inevitable, but I try to do that as much as possible to, you know, when I'm focused and doing work, I try to, you know, not have any distractions. And then when it's time to, you know, wind down and spend time with family, um, I try to put 100% of focus into that too. So you're not kind of spending half your mind on one thing and half your mind on another. Great. What's a hobby you enjoy that might surprise people? Well, I, I play a lot of um, table tennis. That's probably something that is that is surprising for for people. Um, and I'm pretty good on the on the drums. Uh, I used to I used to play drums uh, in in high school, and so uh, and used to be in a band. So that's those are probably two things that uh, would surprise most people when they first meet me. Cool. I'm a drummer too. Oh yeah, nice, uh -huh. nice. Yeah, um, I, I I used to play a lot, and then kind of. Uh, uh, still had the still had the set of drums a couple of years ago, but then uh, sold it after uh, you know it got it got a little too loud in the in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Did you play in the high school band? Yeah, but it was more of like a a band uh, like a jet like a jamming band uh, with, with friends. So okay. it wasn't like a like like the marching band or or anything like that. But uh, you know we used to have sessions on like a weekend and just you know a couple of friends bring a guitar, bring a keyboard, and just kind of jam out. So um, I don't know why I, I kind of picked up drums. I think it was just um, something that, that was, I guess, yeah, not, not tr traditional. A lot of people played guitar. A lot of people played keyboard and piano. And I just thought, you know, why don't I try something that's, uh, and, at, and at the time, my parents were probably, you know, disapproving of that because it was so loud in the, in the house. And that was probably one of the reasons why I wanted to pick that up. <laughs> All right. My last question, Henry, is what's one powerful action step that our listeners can take to help them live a more fulfilling life? Sure. And I think this is kind of the guiding light that I've always lived by, uh, which is you have to find uh, what you love and do what you love. 
uh, from, a, from a career standpoint. And I know that there are listeners and, and viewers that probably haven't found that yet, and that's completely okay. You just have to experiment and try different things to find that calling of yours. Because, you know, just, just as I experimented with investment banking, I, I found out after a couple of years that that wasn't for, for me. I didn't want that as a long-term career. And so you have to find something that's going to be f fulfilling because that's going to be your ultimate uh, source of, of happiness, I think, right? Because, you know, you spend the majority of your day uh, doing, uh, you know, at work or, um, you know, uh, from uh, at, at your job. So you want to be able to do something that you are not kind of waking up every morning and, dra and dragging your feet out of bed for. So you have to find that calling in viewers. And if you haven't found that, then you have to experiment. You have to try different things. You know, maybe uh, run a side, uh, side business. Maybe try something to sell on Etsy. You know, whatever it is, maybe you had a knack for, for design. Try that, right, and see if you like it. Then the more things you can experiment with, the more likely it is that you're going to find that thing that you just love and work doesn't seem like work anymore. And I think that's going to be a true source of happiness and fulfillment in your life. I love that. Well, I think our listeners are really going to enjoy this episode and they get a lot of uh, new insights and fresh perspectives on growing their business. So thank you very much for being on the podcast, Henry. Thank you so much for having me, Scott. And uh, hopefully we can do this sometime again soon. Sure. Great. So that'll be the, uh, the end of it. Uh, and like I said, I'll, I'll send you the link when I uh, put it together. Usually, you know, less than a week, usually I get them out there. And okay. of course, you know, feel free to share them on your social and get the word out. Definitely. Uh, Definitely. Yeah. We, we, we always do when, when I attend the podcast um, to our, to our email list on our social media. So it would mm -hmm. definitely um, get some traction there, but it was really nice uh, talking to you. How's, how's uh, everything kind of, you know, how has the, the pandemic and everything, um, you know, w working from home? How's that, how's that been? Well, I'm a music therapist full time. Okay. So I took quite a hit with that because I work mostly with um, people that are medically fragile, adults with disability, and also the elderly. So it's, okay. it's, they don't want to have any, you know, safety concerns. So I've been doing some right. Zoom sessions and FaceTime, that kind of thing at home. But, uh, you know, I, I've really, this idea of the time management part, and I wrote a book about, you know, all the hats we wear, and this idea of uh -huh. identifying our roles and, and really kind of taking a musician's approach to managing your life. Like yeah. instead of a, a set list of songs, we have a set list of these different roles that we play and it changes mm. every year. That's so that, yeah. yeah, so that's really got my uh, passion. So really I would like to transition into more of the coaching and presentations. I was starting to okay. do some speaking things at colleges and, you know, for time management and leadership and productivity and work-life balance, but uh, you know, then the pandemic. So it's been more, you know, uh, webinars and, and, Really, I've been taking this time to get going on the social. You know, I have this would be the 29th episode for the podcast. Oh wow! Okay. So just trying to, you know, my my struggle is I I love to put out content and I like to do blog posts and I love the podcast, uh, but it's 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 the getting the reaction back and getting the subscribers and the listeners and and then you spend a lot of time on YouTube and then you don't see anything happening and then you just forget that and go. So it's finding that balance of you know being able to you know, use one thing with a lot of different platforms and be smart about yeah. it. And just trying to refine that. It's just me. So. Right, right, right. Yeah. No. And that's, that's uh, going back to what I was saying. Yeah. I, I completely understand the pain because, you know, back in the day when you had to start content, it was like, you know, you, you find some time to take a picture to put on Instagram. It's like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's tough, but I think right. once you have established a system, especially repurposing content, I think it's, it's a huge thing that we do because we only have, probably two to three pieces of pillar like content every single week, mm. but we can repurpose that into like 20, 30 pieces of content just right. from those two to three pillars. So, uh, you know, we, we shoot, you know, 10 minute long form videos, probably three of those every, um, every week, but that can be repurposed. Each one can be repurposed into like two to three different IGTV and maybe a Instagram story, maybe a snapshot, maybe on Twitter, on Facebook. So we just try to, you know, repurpose it as much as we can. So we're not kind of constantly creating um, new content and just adapting it, uh, just adapting it to kind of how the platform interacts, how people interact with the, with that specific platform. 
Hmm. So, yeah. yeah, I was I was wondering too with the, the embroidery. You know, like when you were talking about your passion and your mission and, and feeling like work isn't work. Is that? Do you think it's because of the people that are there and the the work that you're able to do? It's not so much embroidery. Like it could be Tupperware or you know making baseballs yeah, yeah. or anything else. That's right? true. Yeah, yeah. No, that's 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 very true. I think it's the it's the ability to to make an impact and to and to affect change. I think that was what was the most fulfilling to me because let's face it, you know, when I was an analyst in, in investment banking, um, I was kind of like a cog in a in a bigger machine, right? Like there's there's not much that you can you can affect. Um, but you know, being at a at a at a smaller company, a growing company, you have a, you have a lot more uh, impact. You can you're you can. You wear a lot, a lot more hats, yes, mm -hmm. uh, but you can also affect a lot more change. And so I, I, I think the gratification and, and satisfaction from seeing the ideas being executed and the results that were driven from those have been kind of like a, it was like a positive feedback loop. It's like you just made mm -hmm. it, made, made you want to do it more. Right. And, 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 and that made me want to dig into the industry more. And then as you dig into it more, you, you get more knowledgeable about it. You get, you, you have more um, experience and uh, you produce more content and then you grow more and it's like a you know, never ending cycle. So yes, I, I, I think, I think, you know, looking back, it could have been Tupperware or anything else, but I think it was just, you know, this opportunity came up and the results from it have really kind of, now made me fall in love with kind of uh, you know what I do and the and the industry and then that once once you do that once you kind of you know dive in and uh, and are immersed in the industry, then it, you you should start seeing so many different opportunities of what you can do and what what can be done and what can you know new projects and new growth opportunities and then um, it just really takes off so uh, work doesn't feel like work at at, at that point. Hmm. What would be your advice to me to to build more life coaching clients? Well, I think the, the content that you're doing is, is, is great. Um, I, I don't know how, how, how frequently you're, you're making the, the podcast. Is it like every week? Yeah, it's turned into a couple of times a week. Okay, a couple of times a week. Yeah, I think the um, uh, keep on doing the, the content. And um, I don't know if you have tried um, to do any kind of um, ads to kind of get, get, some, get some leads or lead magnet. If you have a piece of content that's like, maybe a small part of, of what you do, like uh, say like you have this life, life coach uh, course, right? Or, yeah. or this, this, this program, break off a small piece of that and that's very valuable and just put that as a lead magnet and start seeing if people opt into either a PDF or a short video or whatever the case mm. is and get people into a, into a funnel, um, get, get, start collecting emails and do some email marketing. I think you'll be able to build up some clients that way. If, you're, okay. if you have really good content and your program is good, um, and you, you, you have established that, then break off a small piece of that into, into a low, low, um, low dollar offer, right? Maybe people can opt into that for like, you know, a dollar and, and, you know, get, you know, get this piece. It shows a little bit of commitment from their end. So, you know, mm -hmm. that they're like, they're interested. So it's not, you know, it's not, it's not free. Um, you can do like a low dollar offer or make it free as a free lead magnet and, 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 and attract people that way. But a low dollar offer can also work when, they feel that they're committing their, their, you know, people either commit their time or, or their money. So yeah. you get, you know, if, if you, if they're committing their time, then your content, you know, better be good. If they're committing their, their money, they're also, you know, mentally and psychologically com committed to that, to that investment, even though it's, it's very small. And then, then, you know, kind of, you know, who to target and what's your best fit there. Like my next thing is a planner. I have a, a booklet. Okay. At, uh, so it has every day of the month and it has, you know, like a regular day planner, but it's a different, you know, it goes one month at a time. So that I'm going to put on the website as a free PDF, you know, maybe two yeah. free months of the, so, and then if I were to also have this physical copy, like all I know is to go to Staples and spend $14 to get this done. I'm sure if I looked online, I could get it for a lot cheaper and they would just print them when I have an order. Right. Yeah, 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 exactly. Right. You can, so um, in the marketing world, they call that the, uh, uh, free, like you can do a free uh, free plus shipping type of offer. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, you know, all, all you have to do is pay for the shipping. I'll send you this planner free of charge. And you, you know, you package it nice, have a nice note in there, and people mm -hmm. like receiving like physical physical stuff. 
So you can do that as a PDF. You can do that as a, as a free, free plus shipping. And the goal of the free plus shipping is not to, you know, make any profit out of it as, you know, as you know, maybe you're, you're even making a, making a loss, but best case you're breaking even so that you cover kind of your expenses um, mm -hmm. with, with them paying shipping. Also, it's, it's a commitment from their end, right? Like pay seven ninety five for, for shipping, get a free planner. Right. And then you get a physical planner. So that can be a lead magnet um, uh, that can mm -hmm. you know, drive some traction there. Um, it, it is a little bit more work you know, to kind of do a physical product than a, than a you know, PDF. Um, but there's merit to it when people receive something tangible in their mm. hands. Especially those clients that they want to have something physical. They want a physical planner. Yeah. To, right, to right, right. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, so those both are very good. I think you're on the right track. You know, um, you know, just breaking off a piece of the content, what's valuable, you know, whether it's planning or some, some leadership uh, tips, time management, maybe there's a time management um, piece of content that they can use to plan out their day or whatever the case is. Um, those, those can also, they can, those can all be um, lead, lead magnets or, or um, kind of tripwire offers that are very low, low in dollar amount. And it seems a very timely, all those subjects are needed, right? So. Right, right, exactly. And then, you know, anything with like, how to deal with work from home. And that's also a pretty, probably yep. a very tre trending topic. Um, yeah. And then once you get them into your funnel, you know, um, you can have them uh, schedule a, a, a consultation call. Right. And then, you know, and then you can sell them on the call. What about target market? Everyone always says you need a, a niche or target market. I, I'm, I don't know. Yeah. I'm struggling with that because I, I mean, uh, I guess the time management could go to anyone, but I think it probably would be more valuable if I were to say this is for entrepreneurs, this is for solopreneurs, you know, teachers. Yeah, but yeah. I, I think, I, I think, uh, I think, yeah, you have to hone in on your target audience. You know, who's that kind of, you know, um, top I don't know what that is. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, Whoever will take yeah. me as my audience. <laughs> right, right. But, but you have, I think, I think you have to hone in because, uh, or else your messaging is going to be too, too broad. Uh, it's right. not going to apply to anyone. Right. So um, I think part of that is, is, is testing. You kind of have to see kind of who reacts to a specific type of message. And it's not to say that you can't have multiple types of messages, but you, it's got to be tailored to that group of people. Like if you're talking to entrepreneurs, um, it's gotta, it's gotta speak to them, right? Like, yeah. Hey, you know, I know the struggles you're facing and this is why I can, I can help you. But maybe you're talking to, you know, um, stay at home moms, all right. That are running a, running a side business or whatever the case is like that could be, you know, that's something completely different than talking to, talking to, you know, full-time, full-time founders and entrepreneurs of a, of a startup. So it's just about kind of, you know, different, different messaging. I think if you don't know your target audience now, um, or, or, or right now you kind of have to figure that out. And that's by, um, by testing, you know, go after yep. kind of, you know, who, um, I'm sure there's, there's listeners and viewers to, to, to your, to your podcast. So look at, look at who's, what are the type of profiles of those people, right? Are they entrepreneurs? Are they, you know, uh, and trying to get some data that way. And then once you kind of start seeing a trend, you can, you can find out, Hey, um, you know, I'm going to go after, you know, this group of people. And then if that works, then, then go with it and then expand into other verticals. Um, and if that doesn't work, you, you kind of pivot and maybe target another uh, group. But I think, um, as you mentioned, uh, this time management and leadership, it can apply to, to anyone who's, uh, who's, who's in business. Um, it's just about the messaging to those specific groups of people have to be different because yeah. um, time management a to a, yeah, time management to a start, small startup founder or solo entrepreneur is going to be different than to a fortune 500 CEO. So I could just uh, custom that con. So on my website, I could have, you know, this, all the hats we wear for entrepreneurs, all the hats we wear for corporate. Right. Leaders. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And that way they can see kind of uh, what bucket they can self segment into what bucket hmm. they, they fall into. Uh, but the messaging just has to be different. Right. If you were me, who, who would be your target market for this type of podcast? Uh, you know, who, who would you think would be the, busy professionals is that too broad uh, entrepreneurs yeah i don't i don't think i don't think busy professionals um i think entrepreneurs will be the way to go mm -hmm. um uh because you have to um one you also have to consider i don't know kind of the price point of your of your of your program but you have to consider kind of like okay who who has the ability to afford something like this and 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 will, and will want this so um I would say, you know, busy professionals, um, probably, probably not, at least from my experience, like they're, 
um, they're kind of going to their job and just focusing on that. They, 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 they're not really focused on kind of the, you know, it's like back in the day when I was at Goldman Sachs, I, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have a need or, or thought about uh, kind of time management and, and life and life coaching. But, um, you know, as a, as a leader within an organization, that might be more, more, more relevant. So I think it's definitely um, people uh, that are leaders in, in organizations, but it's just a matter of, of scale. Like, is it, are you looking for um, stay at home, uh, you know, uh, startups and, and entre entrepreneurs or, uh, you know, slightly bigger companies. But mm -hmm. I think you can, I think if I were you, I would, I would target the, on, the entrepreneurs who are, um, yeah, solo entrepreneurs um, starting out or even just a team of a couple um, that can help them better manage their time and, 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 you know, be a better leader, grow faster, or even in that mid middle state stage of like, you know, 10, 20 people where now they're kind of starting to feel the, the, um, the weight of kind of being a, a, a sole founder mm. and perhaps kind of, uh, you know, break out of that and be able to scale further. They, they, they need something, uh, else to be able to, to take them there. I'm even thinking of what if I had some kind of a, whether it be a PDF or a free course for like a, a company that has a lot of uh, folks that are starting up with a small business that are overwhelmed, you know, here's a little, a free, you know, as a, a little giveaway, you know, here's a free yeah, yeah, training. Yeah. As a, right, right. Exactly. Yeah. All those type of things that I mentioned can all be lead, lead magnets that can, that can attract people. And, and speaking of that, if you have a lead magnet and you, and you promote it, whether it's via ads or, or, or email or whatever the case is on social, People that opt in are going to be your target audience. When when you when you um, you know if you have a good if you have a, if you have good content, you craft it well, um, and you and you put it out there. People that opt in, you you're going to start getting data of who is opting in. Talk right. talk to those people. You know they get on a call with you and understand. Oh, it's like oh, and then you find out that all these people are solo entrepreneurs at home. Then you know that you know that's your audience. You know, I have found that on Facebook of joining a lot of time management productivity groups and then everyone on there is like would be the perfect person, customer, yeah. but then there's all the rules you can't pitch yourself. So you want to right. be engaged, but you, someone will go, oh, I can't, I'm so busy. I can't manage my time. I'm like, ah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, to, to that, I would say like, as with any, um, as with any kind of platform, you, you, you want to, you want to give first before you take. So I would mm -hmm. still kind of like interact and, and comment. And that way, like in the group, people kind of know you as like, Oh, this is kind of like an authority in, in, in time management and, and the leadership space. Um, even though you can't promote it, say like po post a link or something, you can always like add the person and private message them and, and, mm -hmm. and say, Hey, I, I, you know, if you, if you comment on it and say, Oh, I, oh, I'm struggling to, if, if someone says I'm struggling with my time, you comment on, on giving some, some tips and maybe throw in there's like, Hey, I sent you a private message just so we can connect and see how, how I can help out. And maybe, you know, somebody's going to respond to that. Okay. Great. Yeah. But I always like to give, give value before, before you start selling. People like to receive, you know, value first. So, you know, always comment and give some, give some value, give actual, actual insight. And then that will trigger interest of like, oh, okay, that's interesting. I want to learn more about, about what uh, Scott has to offer. Right. Okay. Great. Awesome. Well, Scott, it was really nice talking to you and uh, it's, it's been fun. And I, you know, I, I wish you the best luck. And, you know, if there's any chance in the future, we can do a collaboration. Um, our team will, will definitely reach out and be in touch. Welcome to the All the Hats We Wear podcast. This show will teach you the time management skills you need to be joyful, productive, and fulfilled in all areas of life. I believe if we want a fulfilling life, we must identify all the hats we wear, then craft each role into a beautiful work of art. This is episode 31, and I'm your host, life coach and productivity expert, Scott Snow. Get ready for an excellent episode. Today, I have the special honor of speaking with Henry Ma. Henry Ma is a business expert who has helped over 3,000 startups and established business owners in over 150 countries grow their decorated apparel businesses in his role as CEO of embroidery machine manufacturer Racoma. A New York University's Stern School of Business graduate, Henry is also the founder of several online startups, including Garmio, an order fulfillment platform for decorated apparel businesses, 
As the host of Apparel Academy, a show on Recoma's YouTube channel, he offers insights and strategies for people looking for success in the decorated apparel industry and starting their businesses with Recoma Machine and other brands as well. His advice and tips reach a loyal community of over 150,000 subscribers on email, Facebook, and YouTube. Henry has been featured in magazines such as Wearables, Printwear and Impressions, Week Can Magazine, and he is a return speaker at the Imprinted Sportswear Shows, a decorated apparel expo and conference, as well as the founder and keynote speaker of the Custom Apparel Conference Deco Summit. You're meant to do great things. If you want to be an innovator and visionary, you have to manage your busy life like one. The All the Hats We Wear planner is the planner for the future. I want to give you a free month of the planner to try out for yourself. Nothing will slip through the cracks anymore. When you use the All the Hats We Wear planner, you'll have everything you need at your fingertips. All of your goals, a vision statement, a list of daily habits, and a checklist to track your progress. Key information for the small and large projects on your plate. Daily sheets to clarify your top outcomes for each day. A week at a glance section to plan for the coming weeks. And much more. The All the Hats We Wear Planner will be your roadmap to a more joyful, productive, and fulfilling life. To claim your free month so you can see for yourself how it will streamline your busy life, visit allthehatsweewear.com.